Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba amidst the energy and the buzz of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Now, amidst the conference, we seize the opportunity to engage with local leaders from across the province. We delve into the pressing issues today, confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices and the insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments by the municipal leaders of the province. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Shirley Kelnick from the Rossburn Municipality, Manitoba. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration at Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Shirley, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start if quickly, if you don't mind, by asking you, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? actually a village at that time. Yeah. I go way back. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I was council for 10 years, and then I ran for mayor because I didn't appreciate my mayor. So I decided I couldn't stand it anymore. So I said, if I don't win, I'm fine with that. So anyway, so then I became the first female mayor in Ross Park. And from then on, I just, and I, I didn't win a lot of acclamations because I think people think, oh yeah, well, just to claim, to claim, to claim. No, I had to fight, fight my way to get to the top. Oh, wow. So this is a unique question that I get to ask you because you've, I don't want to say been around for a while, but has the role of the municipal government changed dramatically from when you first were elected to where you are today in 2024? Tremendously. How so? Tremendously. and no money or very little money coming with it. So that is a huge challenge for small rural communities. It's, it's really a challenge and I don't know how much longer we can continue in that fashion. I'm just going to ask you to move in just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. No worries. Just want to make sure I'm getting your audio because it is having a little bit of a hard time picking you up right now. Just want to make sure. Can you talk in that for a second? Yes. Hello. There we go. Perfect. Okay. They're much better. Um, so I want to turn to uh, Ross Byrne as a whole now, if you don't mind. And I want to ask the stupid question, but the important question. What do you believe is the biggest challenge today, as of recording this, as of this conversation, facing your community? Um, lack of housing, depopulation, young, ch young people leaving for bigger, better dreams city they start they go to high school they graduate and then they leave for university and very few come back we've had several come back though that graduated moved away to another province and now they have family and they've come back to with a job of course yeah so the biggest challenge in, in our part of the world because we amalgamated we are now responsible for the rural municipality and roads gravel it's it's huge 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 so how do you and i say you as the royal you as council deal with those challenges because moving away growth housing that's a lot and that is 
so many different multifaceted areas where people are moving away, but you want to build houses so people can stay. But if they're wanting to leave, you don't want to build something that people are just going to sit empty. Right. And infrastructure, as you know, cost a lot more than it did probably about 10, 15 years ago. Sure. How do you balance the needs of the community with the realities that we currently yeah. reside in, in the infrastructure deficits that municipalities mm -hmm. are facing, whether it be gravel or the financial deficits that we're facing because you don't want to do it on the backs of the people who live there. No, and yet to a certain degree, they are the only source of income. The taxpayer is the only one that covers these costs and and we can't have a, a community without, without people in it, of course, and then they demand, they want good roads. We have a lot of big farmers big equipment. Uh, what used to be uh, maybe hauling grain with a three-ton truck, they now have uh, B-trains, semis, and they are massacring our, our roads. So, And we get road restrictions, which doesn't add to, it just adds to the situation. So, yeah, so those kind of challenges and, and as far as on the backs of the people, I think a lot of people understand that we need roads. You, you can't go, any, go anywhere if you don't have a road to, to travel on. But still, we, we just did our budget, and it's, it's a painful place to be. So we're recording this a few days after, actually about a week and a half after the provincial government tabled their first provincial budget. Right. So I'm going to ask you a political question here. Was there anything in that budget that you saw from your perspective as mayor that will help your community? If we get what they're saying, <laughs> yeah, it'll help. Okay. But, you know, and by, by the time you distribute that 10, 20, 30, 40 million, whatever it is, into infrastructure, I don't have the correct number, uh, by the time you divvy it to all the municipalities across Manitoba, and if it's per cap, because of our small community, how much will we actually get? And the rising costs for fuel, for gravel because um, we have a contractor and you know everything and the equipment is like seven seven hundred thousand for a grader today so and and that is not going to be cheaper in about five no. years oh, no, so it's not going down do you have you set yourself up and I say again you as the royal you as the municipality have you set yourself up for the longevity because a lot of smaller communities, a lot of smaller areas are struggling right now because, like you said, the lack of infrastructure of money and people leaving means that the property taxes are getting lower and lower that the, uh, the, pro uh, the municipalities can collect. What is the municipality doing in the short term to set themselves up for the long-term benefits of tomorrow and 15 years from now so that way Rossburn's still around? Yes. Oh, that's a, an awesome question. Um, we're looking at an at a incentive for people to, to build a home uh, in our community. We've got some uh, old houses that we're going to be taking down and trying to sell the lots to pay for people to build. We're looking at senior housing because there's a shortage of senior housing. Uh, people don't want to move to a big city, and I don't blame them. You know, the crime, the, what's going on in the big cities is, is very scary. So, and we do have an aging population across Manitoba. I mean, it's, it's a given. There's, so how could the government play a role in all of this? I think they need to start looking uh, at a discussion. They talk about partnerships. Well, let's sit down and be partners. It's fine to say Oh yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk to you. We'll partner with you. But please come to the table and talk to us. Yeah. Don't try and plan something grand for 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 municipalities without discussion. Like I think that discussion communication is huge, and that's what I like to see. I would I want to sit down with, like I'm sitting down with you right now, and say, okay, what can you do for us? This is what we have to offer, which isn't a whole lot. But what can you do to help us? Because we want rural communities to live, to survive. Because you still need the road. If you only have 10 people living in the area, you still, they still need to get out of there at some point. You still need medical, ambulances. It, it never ends, you know. It, it doesn't matter what the number of people you have living in your community. The uh, quality of life should always be there. And uh, that's... So, 
I was going to talk about tourism, but I want to stay on that topic that you just said there. Why don't you think more provincial and federal politicians want to have that hard conversation to sit down with mayors, Reeves? And I know this is a left ball out of the blue question, but it's an important one because you have been a mayor, a councillor, you've been on the board of AMM. Have you seen a change of attitude towards municipalities over the last years from the provincial and federal government to more of a, we're just going to tell you what you want instead of you telling us what you want? I haven't seen a huge change. Okay. Uh, you know, I think there's been a lack of communication uh, forever. Um, and maybe they try with the bigger centers, bigger places, because they know those are viable. So us smaller municipalities, we get a, a smaller a share. <laughs> share of the pie. And yeah, uh, tourism is, is a good topic. So I want to so I want to ask about that. And because I've said, if you come on the show, I'm going to come to your community. So this August, I'm doing a big tour of Alberta. Uh, sorry, Manitoba. <laughs> I'm already doing a big tour of Alberta. But in Manitoba, in August, I'm taking an RV and I'm crisscrossing this province. Oh, so great. I'm coming to the municipality. Yeah. I'm coming to Rossburg. Oh. We got a four-minute warning okay. here. So what are some tourist destinations I should see in Ross Burnwell? We there? actually have awesome fishing, Ooh. trout, yeah, stocked lakes, trout fishing, pickerel is huge. Are you a fisher? Uh, my partner is, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I love eating the fish, though. But Same here. <laughs> pickerel, yeah. So uh, And we've got historic sites. We've, you've got a golf course. It's just a nine-hole grass green. It's awesome. It's challenging. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll no. have to and bring my a, bag. <laughs> yeah, and we have a First Nation just down the road from us, and we're trying to partner with them and say, you know, tourism is huge for both of us, so I think we could work together. They have the art talent, and we have the fish. Um, yeah, and a lot of wildlife. We're so close to the park. We're three quarters of an hour away from Clear Lake, which is a huge uh, tourism. We have lots of uh, cottages. We have four lakes with cottages. And Where's the spot in the community that you can go? After a long day, a stressful day of council meetings, a long day of budget deliberations, because we all know those can go for a few hours. Yeah. Is there a spot in the community you can go and just decompress the municipality where you can just let it all go, knowing that tomorrow morning you're going to have to wake up and do the exact same thing over again? Oh, well, we have, in the summertime, it's great. We have a memory park. We call it a memory park where we've got some picnic tables there and you can sit down, have a lunch, have a coffee. Across the street is a, a spot where they, you can have specialty teas, coffees, ice cream, uh, light snacks, healthy snacks. Uh, we also have a Queen Elizabeth Park established as well in honor of the late queen. Like just like Queen Elizabeth II? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. So uh, otherwise there's, you know, there's restaurants. We have three restaurants, a uh, hotel with bar service. So, yeah. So my last question for you, it's the million dollar question, but I think every municipal leader knows how to answer this question, but I like to hear it from them. What makes the Rossburn municipality such a unique place to live, work, and raise a family? I like... I think I, I like it because we all know each other pretty much. We've got lots of newcomers into our community as well that I'm looking forward to meeting. We are going to have a welcome to Rossburn evening in May. Um, it's quiet. People are friendly. Uh, you don't have to drive to Brandon to get groceries. <laughs> we have a, a co-op store and, and yeah, it's... It's unique in itself, and I love the history of our community. I mean, 1884 is a long, long time ago. When oh, I'm when looking forward to exploring Rossburn yes. this summer then. Yeah, um, thank sure. you so much, Shirley, for well, doing thank this. Thank you Greatly so much, appreciate and, and please let me know when you're there. I will meet you and greet you and maybe we'll have a buy coffee. you a coffee. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, 
consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Thank you.